So we're trying to maximize and minimize this function, and we're given this restraint, which of course will require a Lagrange multiplier. And um, we also need to find two things. So we're going to require the critical points and the boundary points. So let's try to figure out what the critical points are first. That will require the Lagrange x, y, z with the lambda. That's going to be equal to the x third, y third, z third minus x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 4 times lambda. And then we can start taking the gradient. So we'll do the x first. That would be 3x squared minus lambda times 2x equals 0. For y, it is 3y squared minus lambda times 2y equals 0. And for z, it is 3z squared minus lambda times 2z equals 0. Now, from this, let's try to solve for x. That's going to be equal to something like x equals uh, 2 lambda over 3. And for y, 3y squared, I think it's just going to be the same thing. In fact, they're all going to be the same thing. So y equals 2 lambda over 3. And, of course, z would equal 2 lambda over 3. The question is, what is lambda? Um, let's plug it into this equation here. So we'll say everything squared. That's going to be 4 lambda squared over 9. And then we're going to want 3 of those. That's going to be equal to 4. So we'll take 4 and divide that by 3. And then multiply it by 9 and divide that by 4. And that's going to be equal lambda squared. So it's going to be 3 equals lambda squared. And so square root of 3 plus or minus equals lambda. Huh. So now we can go and plug that into our equations over here. And we'll see that x would be equal to uh, 2 square root of 3 over 3. And y would also be equal to 2 square root of 3 over 3. I guess this would be plus or minus. And z equals plus or minus square root of 2 squared. Yeah, so yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Plus or minus 2 squared root of 3 over 3. So we have our uh, points. But is that the maximum? That's just the critical point. We also need to know what the boundary points are. And the boundary points... Um, well, let's return to this equation here. Notice how if we were to set x equals 0, um, we could also make this work. I didn't really specify that earlier, but that, that would work as well. So if x were equal to 0, it could work. Um, what if y, y were equal to 0? That could also work. And um, um, z would be possibly also equal to 0 too. These are possibilities, but there's more. So let's say x were equal to 0. If x were equal to 0, then this equation could still work if y were um, uh, 1, the square root of 2, right? Because then square root of 2 squared, and then plus another square root of 2 squared over here, and that, that would still equal 4. So we could also use those. So there's a lot of points here. We're talking 0. Um, after, after x equals 0... You could have um, y equals square root of 2, and then z equals square root of 2. Or you could have y equals 0, and then z would have to equal 2 in order for that to work. Because if that was 0 and that were 0, then this could only work if that were 2 squared. Alright, so that's one option. Uh, we could also do the same thing for y. y equals 0. Then we would say, hey, x could equal square root of 2, or y, uh, x could equal 0, or, you know, and, and we'd start coming to the same conclusions over here, z equals 2. There's a lot of options. We try this again for z, and we'll get that, uh, you know, I don't know, y equals square root of 2, and then x equals, um, 
or y equals uh, 0, and then x equals square root of 2, or x equals 0, or x equals 2. Yeah, so we have these being possible, you know, y equals 2, x equals 2, those types of things. It's a little bit difficult to keep track of all these things. But the idea is that um, 0, 0, 2 could work. Or 2, 0, 0 could work. Or um, uh, square root of 2, square root of 2, 0 could work. But let's try plugging some of these options in here, and let's get rid of some of these. There's there's a lot <laughs> that, could, that could happen. So let's try to get rid of some of these. If we were to plug square root of 2 into this equation with a 0 in there, Let's say it was 0 squared plus square root of 2 squared. Or actually, this is the third power, right? It's the third power. All these. And then um, plus square root of 2 to the uh, third power. Um, I mean, that would only give us 5, 1, 6 or so. So if, if, if we had square root of 2s in there, that would sort of give us this. But let's say we now took away these things and it would be zero, right? Zero plus zero uh, plus the last thing would be two to the third. And if we were to use a two in one of this situation, we would actually end up with eights. So with these particular coordinates, we could get eights for the maximum for f. But these coordinates, we're only getting a 5.6, so we're going to kind of basically just disregard all those coordinates. Um, now, if we had a 0, 0, 0, that wouldn't work. This can't happen. And uh, we just need to try this one. Uh, so, let's say we put in 2 square root of 3. Actually, let's make it 2 divided by square root of 3, because that's kind of how it works. And then um, we're going to put this whole thing, 2 over square root of 3, to the third power. And then to multiply that by 3, times 3. Um, so we could get like a 4.6 with this critical point, 4.6. Um, and that would be plus or minus. So both of these things are going to be plus or minus. But 4.6 and plus or minus um, 5.6 over there isn't really as big as plus or minus 8. So it turns out that this would give us the maximums and minimums. And then we would need to have, um, you know, some form of 2 or a negative 2 in one of these coordinates, either 0, 0, and then plus or minus 2, or 0, plus or minus 2, 0, or plus or minus 2, 0, 0. That would give us the maximum and minimum values for this. Crazy.